Hello audience, this is Joel Tries Harder, where we try to push it to the limit and thwart a game. Today, we return to beating Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the Nintendo Entertainment System for your enjoyment. And we return to where we left off before in Part 1, this being Part 2 in Area 3. I am now Donatello, and this is our party wagon. We will now proceed to party. Part 3 is known as Wall Street to some, according to the instruction booklet. It does not appear to be very much like Wall Street. Ah, oh, these octa guys. These little octopuses are annoying. One of the cool things about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the Nintendo Entertainment System is that there's different sets of monsters. About five or six. And most any stage can switch you between two or three of those sets at a time. At any given time, when you, were at, when you explore the level, it could switch what group you're fighting. Right now we're fighting the group with the fire guys and the little octopuses. And at any moment it could change the ones with the suit's armor. Now we got some pizza here, a little quarter pizza. Let's give it to Leo, he needs it. There you go. Alright, we'll go back to Dawn. We're gonna go get us some missiles. I'm gonna show you the easy way to get missiles. Because if you're gonna get missiles, might as well be easy. Oh look, the monster type changed. Now we're up against the foot balloons and the little blob headed guys and the suit's armor instead of the burning guys. That sucks though, because now the fire guys, they, they would be a lot easier to beat up here in this area. And instead we got the stupid, ah, the stupid suit of armor. It's in my way. Uh, come on, change bad guy groups. New bad guy group, come on, come on. Ah! Alright, we're just gonna have to go for it. We're just, we're just gonna have to take the hit. Here we go. No, wait. Yeah, why won't you look away? Look away, look away. Ah! Oh! Alright, there we go. Alright, I'm gonna show you how to get missiles the easy way. Remember that jump from the first episode? Here we go. Yep, we're gonna, oh. We're gonna, ah, dig it. We're gonna get right over there just like I showed you. Poof, missiles! So if you didn't feel like going through the rest of the level, you wouldn't have to. You could totally skip it. But we want that pizza that's over there, so we're gonna go get that pizza. There we go. Donatello's not always the best choice for exploring because of the slow rate at which he swings his weapon. Here we go, here we go. Oh, ah! Man, hate that jump. That's why I like using my little shortcut to get the missiles. Alright, we don't need that pizza anyway. Okay, we just got a sub-weapon. This is the first time I've gotten a sub-weapon in this series, so I'm gonna show you how they work. This is the triple throwing star. Uh, you get, here we go, there's our triple throwing star. It throws out three little stars, one that goes straight out, one that angles down, and one that angles up. You can activate and deactivate your throw, your sub-weapons with select. And as soon as you pick up a new sub-weapon, or your very first sub-weapon for the turtle, your, it automatically activates. So you need to hit select to turn it off if you don't want to use it. Alright, let's head back in. We need a little more pizza. Ah, look at these guys, it's all over the place, in my way. Ah, man. This is why Donatello is best suited for boss fights and slow enemies, because even though his attack is very powerful and his great range, he's just so slow, swinging his weapon. Michelangelo and Leonardo are both a lot quicker getting their weapon out there. Not so much Raphael, though, because his range is so atrocious that it doesn't really... Ah, oh, darn it! This octopus uh, eyeball thing. Ah, stop it! Man, making me look bad in front of the whole internet. Here we go. Alright, so let's go over here. I'm going to show you a couple of the extra rooms in this level you don't have to go to. You don't have to go over here. But for some people, this might be an easier way to get missiles. There's some missiles over here that you can get. I think you need one set of missiles to get over here, though. So you do need to use those other ones initially. But once you have them, you can come over here and get more a lot more easily. If you don't really particularly care for that area. Some people say that this game is kind of like Zelda 2, otherwise known as The Legend of Zelda Link's Adventure from the Nintendo Entertainment System. Being that it has a two-dimensional overworld that you look at from above. Ah, darn it. I was trying to attack those birds by attacking up, but I used the door instead, because you push up to go through doors. Ah, annoying. And, and then when you go into areas, like in Legend of Zelda, it's a two-dimensional place. But I think there's so many fundamental differences in how these games function that it's really only a visual similarity. You have an overworld where you fight enemies, and you have two-dimensional areas where you fight enemies. I mean, there's so many other differences, though. You have multiple characters in this one. You don't level up. You don't get experience. You, you don't fight enemies on the overworld in instanced situations. You fight them individually, the foot soldiers and the little rolly tanks. 
And one of the cool things here is in this room, you can get a full pizza rather easily. I mean, there's a few enemies, but it's not that hard to walk compared to some, to some of the pizza in that other area we were in. This place over here is way better to hang out in if you really are, are, are hurting for health. You can just get through here, get a full pizza, repeat as necessary. And what's kind of cool is you can come down here into this bit of sewer. And although you got this annoying suit of armor, you can usually avoid him. It might be something else, depending on which group of enemies you're on. It could be the fire guys. But if you can get through this room... Ah, ah, forget, ah man. If you can get through this little bit of sewer with your soft jumps, you want to use soft jumps there, you get more missiles. Soft jumps are where you just tap the jump button instead of holding it down for very short jumps where you don't want to hit your head on the roof. Because if you, you hit your head on the roof, you lose all your forward momentum and you fall in the water. It becomes very important later in this stage. Now, one of the things is this area doesn't actually take you anywhere useful. All it does is poop you back out where you started at, right back on the overworld map. Here we go. We're going to get back over to the party wagon. That's the way we can protect ourselves. The party wagon's only real use is that it keeps you from dying instantly. Oh, dark foot soldiers, come on. Keeps you from dying instantly when you fight the uh, roly tanks. Kills foot soldiers instantly. And you have to use the missiles to get through. Alright, let's get a little more health. We need to get the rest of our guys up to speed in terms of health. Ah, oh, birds! Why is there always birds? And get my way. Alright, he's got some boomerangs. Boomerangs are pretty cool, because when you throw them and you catch them, you don't lose them. You don't. You maintain your count. You catch them and you add them back to your, your count of, of boomerangs. I threw some, but I still have 20. Yeah! Alright. i fight some more... These guys, but I think with boomerangs, it'll be a little bit easier because Michelangelo doesn't want to get that close. He get shot with fire legs while trying to attack that guy with his nunchucks because he has to get so close. Ah, uh, but this guy though, it's really hard to avoid this guy. Kind of makes the full pizza a little more, a little bit less of a, uh, an engaging proposition. Let's give it to Don. He's our hard hitter. He's not always the best for exploring, but you always want to have Don at full health if you can help it because. You want him available when you need him. Now, oh, frog, get out of the way, frog. Let's hit him with our ah, ninja stars. Ninja stars. Ah, ninja stars. It's not working. It's not working. Oh, the frog die. Okay. We lived. Survival is important. So we're healed up a little bit. I think we can move on a little bit. We're not going to go to every single side place you could go to. There's a few other ones that we're not going to bother with. But that was kind of neat. If, if you, once you get your first set of missiles, it's kind of an easier place to go and get some more missiles. So the roller carts, they take two hits with the regular attack. One, two. If you use the missiles, they only take one hit. So you might want to keep that in mind. You probably want to get at least two piles of missiles so you have a few to spare for shooting the roller carts. Just to get them out of your way. But you need them for those barricades. That's the main thing that's going to keep you from getting to the level. It's one of the main actual adventure features of this game. Because this game is kind of an action adventure, but there's very few things that are going to keep you from proceeding. That, the missiles in level 3 being one of the major ones. Uh, the ropes in level 4 kind of, but there's so many places where you can get ropes before then that it's not really a big deal. Uh, so, that's another thing that kind of sets this game apart from Legend of Zelda 2, is that... You don't have to constantly find new items to continue, you just have to find your way. Which is bad enough, because level 4, which we'll see in the next episode, is a lot like Turtle Rock from Zelda 2, from Legend of Zelda Link's Adventure. Where you have to find your way through a maze of interconnected areas on the overworld. Very pain in the butt. But similar to... 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 to wait, did I say Turtle Rock? Uh, Death, I think it was Death Rock. Death Mountain? I forget. Well, anyways, that really annoying area with all the little interconnected area. I think it's Death Mountain. Might be it. Or is that from the third one? Anyways, I digress. The point is, it's a pain in the ass. And we're going to try to get through it. But there's a trick to both of those. The area, the maze-like area in Zelda 2, you can get through by going right or down. As long as you're going right or down, you eventually find your way through it. Similarly, if I remember correctly, you can get through level 4 just by always choosing the uppermost or the leftmost option until you get to the really, really wide place, then it changes around. But generally, your goal is to increase the number. Uh, each area in World 4 has numbers. Now, why are we in this building? We're in this building because of this. The scroll weapon. This turns Raphael from a pansy little wimpy turtle who can't hurt anything 
into the strongest guy in the group. Which is where he should be, because he's the most badass of all the turtles. He may not be the coolest, but... Like, like he's not my personal favorite, but he's definitely the, the nastiest and meanest. So he should be capable of, of, of fighting in this game, it, which he isn't unless you get him a good sub-weapon. And the scrolls are just amazingly powerful. And you don't want them on your main exploring turtle, because you want to save them for strong enemies in situations where you really need them. So putting him on Raphael is a good idea. And now another good reason to come to this building is a full pizza! But it's a tight jump here, you gotta use your soft jump again. Just a light tap, light tap, there we go. And we're across! And now Michelangelo is at full health. He's a good exploring turtle. He doesn't have the same up attack as Leo, but he's fast. There we go. An interesting fun fact. The uh, Konami code, the famous Konami code, up, 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 down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, start, select, something like that. You can use it in this game, too. Not just, uh, like, Contra and Gradius. You can use it in this game to get to double the amount of continues that you have at the beginning. Normally, you only get, uh, I believe it's two continues, which is if you lose every single turtle, you can start over that world, that level, with all your turtles. But you only get that twice, and if you go through all of that, then you're out. But if you use the Konami code, you get four continues. Isn't that a great deal? And look, we're right where we started from. So we're gonna go through twice, so that we can have an extra du heavy duty supply of scrolls for Raphael. The scrolls make quick work of any enemy they come across. They shoot out a bent beam that just kind of kills everything. Uh, they kill most bosses in around four hits, and most enemies in the game take one hit to kill with them. Just one. And once we get to level five, which is the last world with an overworld, there's going to be a few enemies in world five that will actually require two scrolls to kill. Uh, primarily the armadillo enemy comes to mind as being one of the ones that's very difficult to kill and requires two scrolls to beat. But those guys are such a pain in the butt that two scrolls is actually a pretty good deal. Because if you're actually trying to kill them and not just avoid them, it's, it's really hard. Uh, boomerangs work pretty good against them too if you don't have the scrolls as an option if you're in too much of a hurry. Uh, back when I was a very little Joel and I'd play this game quite often, I would actually get all my turtles 99 scrolls before I'd continue with the game. I'd spend between 45 minutes and an hour just going through this one building and sewer. I get, a, I get 99 ropes while I was at it, I think. Because it takes, uh, you're getting 20 per, not 5 like I said in the last episode, I was incorrect. You get 20 per, so that's 20 entries to get 100 on every turtle, and that's if you don't waste any. The only problem is with having every turtle equipped Let's see, uh, hold on, let's see who I need to heal. Uh, Raphael, because he has the scrolls now. Uh, the only problem with having every turtle equipped with scrolls is if you accidentally pick up a sub-weapon that you don't want, your scrolls are gone. That's why I usually just put them on one turtle and keep them around for boss fights. Not this guy, real boss fights. And we're not talking about the Mouser in World 5 either, we're talking about real bosses like the Mecha Turtle and Shredder and the Technodrome. Those ones are so much easier uh, uh, bombs! Ah, so many bombs. Let's see, uh, who doesn't have a sub-weapon? Leo, we'll give him some ninja star- Oh, they disappeared. Never mind. Good job, Leo. You missed out on the ninja stars. We're all mad at you. Oh, where did he come from? And... Oh, what a pain in the butt. Alright, that's it. I'm going back to Mike. You, you lost your chance to go, Leo. I'm mad at you now. Ah, flying! Suit of armor heads! Who thought of that? Who, who thought it was a good idea? Let's make a mechanized suit of armor and when you hit it, its head flies off and flies all around the screen. Is that, is that really one of their better ideas for monsters in this game? Music makes me happy. Foot soldier, you anger me. Ah, missed him. Ah, I'm, I'm slick. Hey, where'd that roller guy go? Ah! Oh, stay away. Back, 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 I say. All right. So we're going to head over here. We're not going to bother with all those buildings that are above us that we could have gone to. Uh, suffice it to say, they have a few interesting things. I believe one of them has uh, a missing turtle if you have a dead turtle. My theory is if one of your turtles dies, just start over. You need to practice the game more if any of your turtles die. Because you should be able to get through this game without a single turtle dying if you really know what you're doing enough to get through it. I suppose you can suffer your way through, but you really need all the skill you can get to beat the Technodrome. 
Like, getting to the Technodrome is hard enough. Beating it and then getting through the next level is going to require some mucho macho skill. You might as well just be good enough to get through the whole rest of the game without losing a turtle if you're going to want to get through the whole game. So, if the turtle dies, start over. If not, if you don't feel like it, then yeah. You know, I believe there's a, a, a room... Either the one that was opposite this one or the one that you get to over on the other side. They'll get you an extra turtle somewhere in there if the one's captured. Maybe I'll make a video at some point showing where all the extra things in this level do. Ah, man. Well, give me a spare moment here. Ah, there we go. Now Leo can get some ninja stars. Ha, ah, ninja star. So the regular ninja stars, you throw out a single ninja star. And they don't go through enemies the way boomerangs do. You hit one enemy with it and the ninja star dissipates. Scroll! Ha, one hit. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Don't have to deal with flying heads when you have scrolls. Alright, half pizza, Dontella. There we go. Awesome. So we're just kind of wandering around here, checking out a few of the extra, one of the extra buildings. I think this one lets you use the ropes on the roof. I'm not certain. It's either this one or one of the other ones around here. I'm not sure. Let's see. I like how the map says I'm nowhere near here. Like it doesn't even know what's going on. Good job, Matt. Uh, 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 the, oh, guys, come on. Come on, guys. Alright, so these are the little pillar things. We normally let you use a rope in level 4, but I don't think they let you do them over here. What's, what's over this way? Somewhere in level 3, there's a place where you can use the rope, but it's kind of pointless. Ah, oh, darn it. Alright, you know what? That's enough of that. Let's, let's just go on with the level. We don't really need to go over there. There's nothing important over there. This is the way you go to actually get through the level. I was just messing around. And this is where we really need to be. I was hoping to make this this video like the first one, where I show all the different little spots in World 3. But you know what? World 3 is a pain in the butt, and I don't want to bother with it. So, someday I'll show you guys where the other buildings go to if you're so interested. But I guarantee you there's nothing really worth... Oh, man! Roller cars. I think I'm supposed to use a missile on those guys. <laughs> I got all those extra missiles. Alright, here we go. So... What's over here? I forget what's over here. Oh, there's nothing over here. Man, why even add this to the game? Why not just put another building there so I can't go over there? Ah. Dear Mr. Konami, I would like to issue a complaint about your game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the Nintendo Entertainment System that you did not claim to make in the American release version. Your level world 3 over map world map is very annoying. Oh, this guy gets stuck. Look. Yeah, he's not gonna move. It's like, oh, wow, great enemy getting in my way there. Ooh. Yeah, the AI in this game is a little screwy sometimes. So this area is just like, I think it's the most annoying area in the game next to that area in World th Level 3 that kind of smushes you. Uh, all our turtles are beat up except for like Raphael and somewhat Michelangelo. It's just sad. That's right, I got scrolls. What are you gonna do? I got scrolls, son. Insta kill you. Kind of. Wasting my scrolls here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, scroll you. Scroll you off screen. The easy way. So, when you come down here, this is a really annoying area that I got stuck on for a long time when I was a little Joel. Because this is one of those soft jumps. Just tap to get across. Oh, man, he came back! But yeah, if you use your soft tap jump to get through these areas, you can, you can get through safely. If you use a fully powered jump, you're just going to hit your head and fall in the water. I've done it before. It is not fun. There we go, getting along. Ah, 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 no, ah, no, ah. Why can't I swim? I had a whole swimming stage before this. Remember that other episode, swimming stage? I know how to swim. I'm a turtle. I live in the water. I guess it's poop water or something, so I don't want to swim in it. I don't know. Anyways, if you fall in the water, you lose like a box of health or two, and you get pooped out nearby the, the door to like the area you were in. You gotta start over. So let's go with Michelangelo. He's got an okay amount of health. He has boomerangs. He'll be alright. Cool thing is, I don't have to worry about, you know, losing all my boomerangs like I do my scrolls. I need those scrolls for boss fights. So let's head down here. And see... Oh, it's different enemies this time. We got the birds, and we got the fire guys that shoot fire legs at you. Weird enemies. Alright, I got you. Ha, leg. Yeah, he went out in the water. He's all... Alright. I love this music here. Dun, dun. I love the way the backgrounds look too. It's really easy to tell the foreground from the background. The foreground is green, the background is brown. 
you really know where everything is. There's no confusion. It all looks good. You got only maybe three or four colors in the background, but it looks vivid and detailed with the pipes. The foreground's a little bit plain. All the little boxes look almost the same. There's a little bit of variety, but it, it seems somewhat limited compa by comparison to the background. But, you know, you know where you are and you know how to get around. What kind of sewer is this? Who would design a sewer this way? That you'd have to do this kind of jumping to get through it. Like, what kind of maintenance crew puts up with this on a daily basis coming into the sewers? Ooh, full pizza. This is where we can get healed if we get to the end of level 3 and we're not doing very well. The only annoying thing is if we fall in the sewer, we don't start here, we start back at the entrance, which is really annoying. Or if we get killed, we don't start here, we start at the other entrance. Alright, our turtles are in pretty good shape. Oh, Michelangelo. There we go. Alright, so everybody's in good shape. We're doing good now. We didn't lose no turtles. We beat up all the bad guys. Now we just gotta beat us the boss. There we go. Yeah, so level 3 is kind of a maze, but not like level 4 is. You can find your way through. Uh, it's a fire guy! Yeah, Leonardo's power is just not very impressive. Let's try using throwing stars or something. There we go. Uh, you gotta use each... You gotta throw a new throwing star for every leg each... Uh, you know what? Forget it. Forget it. Okay. That's how we do it. That's how we roll. That's how we try really hard. Alright, so this level's kind of neat. It has kind of a girder look about it. Kind of like, almost like a construction site or something. It has a blue background, pink foreground. I, I think Konami are like, they're the masters of picking strange background colors that work well together. I like how everything has kind of a shadow. So it looks like it's all really there. You got the ladder has a shadow, the roof has a shadow. Here we are on the ceiling. We're making our way around. And what do we have here in our New York skyline? It's Master Splinter! Hey, guy! It's like a whole, been a whole episode since I've seen you. And a Leonardo lock-off. You know what we need to be used to fight him? Scrolls. Yeah, yeah, scrolls take out a... I mean, this is, like, ridiculous how fast you can kill these guys with scrolls. Like, four hits per form. He starts off as a Leonardo, like, knockoff. And I think the first time I ever fought him, Leonardo was dead. So I was like, oh, Leonardo, how'd they get you to work for them? Yeah, and then he turns into a robot, and you're like, oh, never mind. And that's and that's level three, yeah. That's pretty much it. It's the way through. You just gotta master them little soft jumps, and you can pretty much get through it pretty easily. Just don't go to any of the places I didn't go to, and you'll be fine. So here we are, at level four, and that's about it. So in finality, with an ending, I say we're done for now. As this episode draws to a close, watch for more the Joel action in the future. Bum bum bum! Ba da da! Where we take on level 4, the JFK Airport. Yes, the airport. The true maze level. Level 3 was a warm up compared to this. You got freaking dive bombing planes and all kinds of craziness. Look at this place. This place is a mess. I tell you, this is no good at all. But we'll take care of it. We'll take it out. We'll take it to town. We'll take it to task. We'll show it who's boss, who's the man, who's the Joel. Just you and I, audience. Together, we will continue in episode three. Episode two, out. Joel, yeah!